everybody, this is Jen from Garden Jen's Journey. Today we're going to be talking about doing some garden planning and getting ready for the new garden year. And I'm going to be showing you some of the seeds that I'm actually adding to my garden this year and how I decide on what I'm going to do. So come along with me to my uh, desk and I'm going to show you kind of what I do in order to plan for this year's garden. Um, I have here a my garden planner. Uh, it's just a simple binder that I put together and I use this every year to plan out my garden and help me determine what seeds I'm growing and exactly how many of those seeds um, that I'm going to need to plant in order to um, fill those garden spaces. So I'm going to go through here and I'm going to show you kind of how I do it, maybe give you some ideas. Um, you don't have to do it exactly the way I do it. This is just how I found works for me and gets me ready for the growing season. Okay, for the first step in planning your garden, you need to know uh, what garden space you have to work with. And um, my actual garden plot map is missing, wouldn't you know, for this video. But I'm, at, I'm going to show you kind of how I put it together. Um, In this folder, I have graph paper, um, and I have two different sizes. I have, this is um, a half inch, and then um, quarter inch. And um, I actually printed these um, off the internet, um, and I will put the link on where I got these. Um, and it works very well. Uh, my garden, my one main garden area is approximately uh, 70 by 30, so this works very well. Um, it's got additional grids on it to help you be able to, to count um, uh, to keep your measurements accurate. I use one, um, one square for each foot of my garden space. So, um, you know, if I count uh, 30 squares across, which I need more than one sheet, that's 30 inches or 30 feet, and then um, same the other way, it's 70 feet. And so um, I use the, the smaller print to do my large drawing of my um, whole entire garden. And then for individual beds, I use the larger size um, because it's more scaled down and I can kind of see a bigger picture on um, what my actual garden space is going to look like per bed. And I'll show you uh, what last year's beds look like so you can see what I'm talking about. All right. So in here, this was last year's beds. So um, like this was my mint garden that I had where my container beds were um, and it was a 15 by 16 foot space. So I had um, 15 squares going this way and then 16 going this way, each representing a foot. And because I do square foot gardening, that actually comes in very handy. All right. And then I had some odd shaped beds um, that I was dealing with. I have a sawtooth uh, fencing here made with pallets. So I've got that and where I have my asparagus planted in this uh, triangular shape here. And then um, I mark on my garden maps where I have perennials. Uh, like last year in this corner of this particular bed, I had catnip. Um, I have sage planted here and here. Uh, so those are my perennials that I have to work around. Um, in order to uh, plant this bed. And uh, here's just some of my other beds that I had. This one is uh, my current uh, pollinator bed, as I call it. Um, it's where most of my flowers go for my pollinator uh, insects and um, birds. Um, so I had bee balm there, that's a perennial. Um, my gallardia, it's supposed to self-seed, so I made sure I marked where the gallardia was at that uh, particular time. And then uh, tansy is another perennial, um, and so I made sure to mark those. And then I know that this area 
is free uh, for me to plant uh, either some more perennials or even some annuals in this space. So that's uh, what I do with the garden beds. And I'll show you what this year's beds are looking like. All right, so I'm not sure if the camera can pick up all the fine lines, um, but um, I have a different setup of beds because I'm doing a lot more trellises this year. I grow a lot of pole beans, and so um, I have a different setup to make sure that I get my trellises all situated this year. And I'm reorientating the, the beds that I have. Um, as you saw in the uh, just a few minutes ago, I have uh, weird shaped beds that I had because I was trying to do um, just some nice, interesting um, shaped beds for aesthetic uh, reasons. But I find that even though aesthetically it was kind of cool, um, it actually wasted more space than than um, made uh, you know usable. So I just went back to the rectangular and square uh, shaped beds that will um, utilize the space a lot better. So. Um, I have uh, half beds as I call them. My uh, beds, since I do square foot gardening, are generally four foot by, um, I have eight foot and 12 foot sections um, because if you reach from both sides, you can reach approximately two foot across. For my trellis beds, because they have a trellis on one side of them, they're only going to be two foot wide because I can only reach uh, two foot across and then the trellis is actually gonna be a wall. So I made note of that in here. And then I went through, and I have also in here as well, let's see if I can flip to it, um, information I need to plan my garden. Uh, the square foot gardening method, um, it tells me how many plants per square that I can uh, put in for each um, uh, plant type. And then I also do a companion planting. Um, and so, I have that information and you're going to find uh, lots of different information if you want to do the companion planting um, route uh, with different um, com uh, companions and, and non-companions. There's a lot of different information out there. Um, but basically what I am looking for is um, plants that are going to help each other as far as uh, strong pungent herbs that are going to replace lots of insects that you have. Um, also there's um, some plants that compete for nutrients um, like you don't want to plant um, corn with another nitrogen hogging uh, plant otherwise you're going to end up with really poor plants unless you're adding a lot of fertilizer but your best bet is to plant a corn with like a bean or another nitrogen adding plant um, and so that's what I do for companion plants. But um, yeah, these are the resources that I use to figure out um, what I'm putting in my beds. This area I didn't worry about so much. I know that I'm growing lettuce and collards and spinach and I don't particularly pay attention to the square foot so much with these because I'll overseed them and then um, I'll pull out, uh, I'll thin them out and I'll use um, the the plants they pull out um, as food. So really nothing's going to waste um, with some of the smaller crops. But anyways, I take all that information and I put it into a list form. Um, and it's kind of hard to read because I have sloppy handwriting. But um, this is a list form of what types of plants I'm growing and exactly which type of plant. Um, I have a lot of different varieties of sunflower seeds that I have in my collection, a lot of different uh, varieties of beans and tomatoes and squash. And so I have to make myself a list of what variety am I planting this year. And since I try to save seeds from year to year, I have to make sure that I follow the um, seed saving advice to make sure I don't have cross pollination that will affect my ability to save seeds from those plants. So that's another consideration I take um, into plant, planning my garden. So once I figure out exactly what I'm putting in my garden spaces, um, then I go and I decide how many um, jugs that I need to plant with my winter sowing in order to make sure I have enough plants for here. I have not done that yet this year. I'm actually working on that um, probably Sunday or Monday. 
Well, we're supposed to have a big snowstorm here, so that'll kind of be my project for the weekend, is figuring out how many jugs I'm going to need this year to plant what I want to uh, plant this year. But I will show you some of the new varieties of seeds that I got this year. Um, I gave away a lot of seeds at my seed swap, um, or in the seed swap that I participate in yearly. And I wasn't actually going to buy more seeds because I have a lot. But um, there were quite a few varieties that I, um, I saw that I wanted to try and add to my collection um, for different reasons. And so I'll show you some of the seeds that I got. Um, and I get uh, seeds from Baker Creek and in, in my garden. Um, this is uh, Chinese broccoli. And um, I'll open it up here. I keep them in these uh, little jewelry bags because we have high humidity here. And so putting them in jewelry bags keeps these seeds from getting uh, any type of moisture in them. Anyways, this is Chinese broccoli, Yud Fa. And um, we don't uh, grow broccoli very well in this area. Um, it usually goes to bolt or, uh, you know, I get a lot more stem um, than edible broccoli portion. And so it goes to waste. Well, this year Baker Creek came out with this particular variety. And what I like about it is that it grows uh, individual stems with um, the broccoli head on it. And these stems are about the size of a, a thick asparagus, I guess. And so I thought that would be a neat crop to try to grow to see if I can actually grow a type of broccoli here um, that we can actually consume. So yeah, I got this one. This is new, um, different type of kale this year. Um, I love my sunflowers, so I got a new sunflower. Um, this is really nice. I try to uh, be a very self-sufficient when it comes to our food as much as possible. And so Emma Gardner is offering a lot of new varieties to their lineup this year. And uh, this was one of them. It is called the Paprika Pepper. And this is the uh, pepper that um, the spice paprika is made out of. So I thought, oh cool, I can grow my own paprika. So this got added to my lineup this year. Uh, M.A. Gardner also came out with a brand new lineup this year of cut flowers. And so I thought that's gonna be awesome. Um, I can add more flowers to my pollinator beds and also uh, add more selection to my um, lineup at the farmer's market. So I have um, a lot more flowers this year that I'm adding, uh, a lot more snapdragons. I have some asters and some straw flowers I'm adding to that lineup. Let's see what else is in here. Uh, a lot of people talk about the purple bumblebee uh, tomato, so um, I got that one. I've been growing the pink bumblebee for about three years now, so that's the purple. And uh, painted mountain corn, really love uh, the colors of that, and we're trying to grow more corn for cornmeal, and also um, it's a very good seller at the farmer's market for people who want corn for fall decorations. So I got all that going on. Let's see what else do we got here. And these are just some of the seeds that I have. I haven't gone through and actually separated them to where they go yet. They've just been this baggy. Um, I have some more buckwheat. Buckwheat is a great cover crop and also uh, helps with bringing in the pollinators, uh, the good pollinators. So I got some uh, rose red uh, buckwheat this year. It's just gorgeous looking. Um, like I said, I got some more beans because we do a lot of dried beans here. So um, I got some more beans there. Again, flowers. Um, the butterfly pea, beautiful flower, but you can also use it as a dye and things like that. Love the dual purpose of that. So we got that. The different lettuces. Uh, I love my coxcomb. They're a beautiful flower. Um, this is the safflower. And safflowers are, um, it's put in the Baker Creek catalog as the poor man's um, saffron. And uh, it's a very beautiful flower. I actually grew this last year for the first time. And so I made sure to get more of this um, because it was hard to save the seeds from. Um, they got buried by my, my, by my borage and it was hard to find these little guys. And uh, coriander. Uh, cilantro and these two plants if you did not know they're actually the same plant 
uh, coriander comes from the cilantro when it bolts. But this specific one is, is made for uh, being a fast bolting uh, cilantro, so you get the seeds. Where this one's more of a slow bolt, so you get the leaves. But they're actually the same exact um, type of plant there. And then this is um, my greatest addition this year, I think. Um, I do a lot of herbs. Um, if you've seen my other videos, you know I'm majorly into um, medicinal herbs and things. And so I got the roselle, which I did not know was the hibiscus that you will find in uh, teas and things like that. It's actually the roselle. So I bought that this year and I hope I can grow it um, because I really love the uh, hibiscus. And then of course I love Baker Creek because with uh, your orders you always get some free seeds. And so that's my um, just some of the seeds that I'm adding this year. Uh, continue to watch further videos so you can see more of what I'm doing. Um, I'll start winter sowing and not next month uh, but around March. Uh, just because in this area, the last couple of years, it's been really bad as far as the uh, weather goes up and down, up and down, and it doesn't stay constantly cold. Um, so I'm waiting until uh, later March when the, the weather seems to mellow out enough to safely winter sow in my area. But anyways, I'll keep you updated on how we're going. And I thank you so much for sticking with me and watching the journey. And until next time, everybody, I hope wherever you are, your day is wonderfully blessed. Bye.